सल्फर स्टार्ट किया था उस दिन अकरंज विकरंज नहीं थी नहीं 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 टुडे वी विल स्टार्ट विद सल्फर वी विल फिनिश ऑफ लिटिल बिट ऑफ सल्फर टुडे स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ सल्फर डाइऑक्साइड मॉलिक्यूल We have finished on sulfuric acid. Then, okay, Wednesday we'll complete group sixteen. As you wish. okay we start so today we are starting with sulfur okay then we'll come to compounds of sulfur sulfuric acid and lastly we will come to what you call the oxy acids of sulfur like oxy acids of phosphorus this is also very important it is clear so like i have been telling him now this why am that every day you take one oxy acid of phosphorus practice it 10 times so you make a list so every day when you do it 10 times now at the end of, means all the properties what is the oxidation state how many bond was there how many poh bond was there all that same way i was i was telling him so you can continue with a every day if you tackle one by the time your exam comes whether it's board or the entrance exam later on what will happen is you're sure about those uh, oxy acids of phosphorus and now next lecture will have oxy acids of sulfur they are very important questions can be asked and they know the children find it tricky so today we are talking about sulfur see sulfur mostly occurs in the combined state sulfur occurs in the combined state but in certain places okay like texas in america sulfur so in texas in america in texas Sulfur does occur in the free state. Sulfur does occur in free state. That is why they have got some method. You know, they put three tubes into the ground. You know, when the through the middle tube they'll put hot water, melt the sulfur. Through the second in outer tube they will put uh, what do you call compressed air, and the whole thing will come out to the central. This kind of mechanism they have got. where they puncture the soil with uh, tubes and in one they put hot water and in the other one they will put compressed air and molten sulfur will come out i forgot the name of the method a very popular method they use in texas to get as far as possible pure sulfur okay but uh, worldwide i mean we buy our sulfur from iran iran is one of the biggest producer of sulfur in around our neighborhood 
So it is Iran, uh, not only so, don't think that Iran only sells oil. Iran also is one of the biggest suppliers of sulfur. It is clear. Now, in the combined state, in the combined state, It occurs as what sulfide and sulfate. If you remember, I had earlier told you this if you have forgotten. Mostly these uh, soft metals like zinc, mercury, these soft metals, they are over exist as sulfide. Like hard metals like iron, titanium, they are over exist as oxide. So this classification you understand why we are only giving certain names. That their ores are sulfide. The reason is they are soft metals. So which are the soft metals? Just think. You can have copper pyrite. Okay. Here I am not saying they are ores. I am saying they are minerals. Remember that. So mineral need not be an ore. Because whichever mineral from which they can profitably extract the metal. That will be called as ore. So here... Sulf these are all minerals where it does occur. Okay, when we talk of ores, soft metal sulfides are uh, more profitable to extract. Hard metal oxides, which is better to ex extract from their oxide. So because when, I, when somebody says sir, copper is hard metal, yes, but copper pyrite may not be the suitable one for A. So what do we have? We have copper pyrite is Cu2S. Then we have Ion pyrite, remember iron pyrite Fe, FeS2 may exist, but commercially iron is made from iron oxide, Fe2O3. It is clear, it is never made from FeS2. Then we have zinc blend, yes. Zinc is obtained from zinc blend. Zinc blend is zinc sulfide cinnabar. Cinnabar is mercuric sulfide. Very easy, you know. I was what you can do is simply take mercuric sulfide, heat with roast it with oxygen, you get mercuric oxide and sulfur dioxide. And I taught you a lingam diagram. Beyond 500 degrees centigrade, mercuric oxide decomposition is spontaneous. You will instantly get mercury. That's how easy it is to obtain mercury from cinnabar. Then you have galena, that is lead sulfide. Then sulfide, then you have sulfate. What are the sulfates that we can talk about? What is it? C type charger. But I don't have to go to the C type charger. I don't have to go to the C type charger. ले ले चार्ज कर जाते समय दे मेरे को सो व्हाट हैपेंस इज सल्फेट इज इज क्लियर सो सल्फेट्स आर व्हाट यू हैव टू नो द नेम्स हां बिकॉज़ देयर इज वन क्वेश्चन व्हिच दे आस्क व्हाट यू बेटर डू इज मेक अ लिस्ट ऑफ ऑल द व्हाट यू कॉल और आई विल डू वन थिंग आई हैव द लिस्ट बाय नेक्स्ट टाइम आई विल टेक द फोटोग्राफ ऑफ द लिस्ट and then send it to you in this thing. And you can buy hard. That this is the mineral, this is the composition. This is the mineral, this is the composition. So it always makes things easy. Instead of telling you to make, there is no time now. So sulfate. When I talk about sulfate, what happens? We have gypsum. What is gypsum? It is simply calcium sulfate 2H2. Okay. Then we have Epsom, again Epsom, if you remember when I started this topic, I had told you, Epsom is magnesium sulfate and then you have 7H2O. I had told you, the name Epsom salt came, Epsom salt came from the river Epsom in England, when whose water if you drink, you are getting purgative, 10, 20 times you will go to the toilet. It's, clear. it's a very strong purgative. Even now it is sold in medical shop as a purgative, but please don't take it because without medical supervision because you could get dehydrated. It is clear. As it is in a city like Bombay, we don't drink properly water. We don't rehydrate ourselves. We are too busy. I don't know for what. It is clear. So, this is its use. 
medicinal use it's used as purgative in the industry this is used as a mordant so if you have some old clothes which is bleeding you can try this trick buy epsom salt put it in water hot water and dip the cloth it is a mordant it will fix the color maybe the bleeding will become less next time because if it bleed continuously bleed the cloth will look old it is clear so some of these high priced shirts that we have compared to the local one the price is high because they are using very special mordants to fix the color to the cloth so the cloth looks new for a very long time so you value for money it is clear so mordants are used one of the mordant happens to be magnesium sulfate is it clear then you have burites b u r y t e s burite is barium sulfate okay then you have glober salt believe me this glober salt has been asked many a times it's a very simple one sodium sulfate 10 h2o glober salt is sodium sulfate na2so4 10 h2o 10 so glober salt is sodium sulfate nice generally you so if you have organic solvents na like for example not ether ether we use uh, sodium but certain organic solvents like uh, carbon tetrachloride if you don't want moisture in that so what we do is we just add sodium sulfate anhydrous sodium sulfate it absorbs the moisture and gets a 10h2o for itself and that so it is used for removing trace amount of water in organic solvent one important use of this sodium sulfate okay so just write down this then we'll start with allotropic forms of sulfur हाँ बोलना हाँ मैं उसको बुला लेते किसको लड़के को हाँ आई वॉन्ट हिम टू बी देर ओके okay now we come to allotropic forms of sulfur so there are two types crystalline and amorphous so where is the cloth ha oh, here so we have we are talking about allotropic forms of sulfur allotropic forms of sulfur so when i talk of allotropic forms of sulfur it is clear what do we have the first is rhombic sulfur rhombic sulfur is it clear it is the most common form of sulfur so all of them will get converted finally into especially monoclinic the next one what we are talking at one point of time they'll get converted into monoclinic sulfur so the temperature at which it exists at equilibrium will be very important that is the question that they will ask it's got a special name that is it's called as transition temperature is it clear so 369 kelvin i think is the temperature Which is transition. So about three sixty nine is something below three sixty nine is something. So we'll see that first. So rhombic sulfur. I'll put monoclinic also together over here. So comparative study we can do. So we have monoclinic sulfur. So what can we say about monoclinic sulfur or rhombic sulfur? It is also called as first is A, also called as. also called as alpha sulfur it is also called as alpha sulfur or it is also i'll write over here or it is also called as octahedral sulfur 
So be prepared for any of these small, small tidbits that they can ask. It's also called as octahedral sulfur. Specific gravity B. Specific gravity kya ho jata hai? What is specific gravity? It is about 2.06. See, now you will ask me why specific gravity has no unit. See, density we always say is gram per ml. Na? We always say density is gram per ml. So, density of a given substance divided by the density of water is a specific gravity. You understood? So, therefore, what happens? Gram per ml of both gets cancelled. So, specific gravity does not have any units. It's a ratio. If you say density of water is 1, then density here of the substance becomes its specific gravity. But since you want to avoid that units part, we prefer what you call specific gravity. It is clear. So, so specific gravity is a ratio. Therefore, it does not have any units. So, that is one thing. Then we have melting point. What is the melting point that we have? Melting point is 385.8 Kelvin. Okay. Insoluble in water, soluble in carbon disulfide. How are they obtained? By evaporating the solution of sulfur in carbon disulfide. It is obtained by it is obtained by evaporating it is obtained by evaporating the solution of sulfur solution of sulfur in carbon disulfide solution of sulfur in carbon disulfide okay it is 8 units puckered ring structure so what is the structure i had told you that if you keep your lips like this you know then 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 this is called as puckered ring structure why i am telling you this puckered ring structure is because you know then the sulfur atoms are arranged in two planes so in the statement form if they ask a question s8r plane r s8 the atoms are arranged in two different planes Okay, and something else, some nonsense, also two, three uh, distractors they can have. So, remember S8 is a crown shaped structure. I am expanding the story. Last time I had just told you puckered ring structure because I knew we are going to come back to this. And I want to do it, you know, one by one. So, remember today I am telling you in a little more expanded way that when we have sulfur octaatomic S8, what am I saying? S8 is in, is, is puckered ring structure. Okay, yes, sulfur atoms are arranged in two different planes this plane and this plane so common will be this sulfur atom so two either three either and three either so one two three four five six seven eight is this clear and one s8 is attached to another s8 by van der waal force atomicity is more so more van der waal force so sulfur will have a higher melting point and boiling point compared to phosphorus because phosphorus phosphorus was tetraatomic p4 so that is how the story starts and ends. So it is puckered ring structure means what happens? This is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. This is S8. S8 ka what happens? Listen carefully. The angle is 107. I told you this is very important. 107 degrees, 204 picometers picometer okay so this will be in one plane this will be in one plane these two are the common atoms s8 is in two different planes is this clear this is called as puckered ring structure now what happens is the next is monoclinic sulfur so what happens it is also called as so b the a it is also called as It is also called as beta sulfur. It is also called as beta sulfur. Like this was called as octahedral sulfur. That is also called as prismatic sulfur. It is also called as prismatic sulfur. Remember all these forms of sulfur are diamagnetic. Common point. Except S2. 
except sulfur diatomic molecule that will be paramagnetic all these people will be para, uh, diamagnetic uh, that will be paramagnetic remember that general statement so this is prismatic sulfur okay it has a melting point now specific gravity specific gravity will be how much 1.98 see these specific gravity values are very very important from the mht cet point of view the local exam local engineering exam because i told you the about nearly 60% of the questions appearing in mh cet they try to keep it textual and factual specific gravity boiling point and all that that's why i'm emphasizing on it we prepare for other entrance exam but these factual questions also are needed is this clear so after you finish all the exam normally the local mh cet is last focus on all this mark in your textbook and keep it so that it becomes easy so specific gravity is 1.98 and what happens is so see now we have 369 kelvin so less than 369 greater than 369 so understand this so what is happening less than 3 less less than if the temperature is uh, less than 369 if the temperature is less than 6369 rhombic sulfur exists if the temperature is uh, in this case um, uh, what do you call greater than greater than yeah if no how do we put it just a minute so you have i'll write it straight i don't want to make it common so stable below that's the best way stable below 369 kelvin and we'll write the stable above stable above 360 at 3 dekho 369 kelvin so this 369 kelvin so from the entrance exam point of view yeah 369 kelvin is called as transition temperature sambhal ke mera wire hai dekh le kaise dikhta tu <laughs> अगर तू फिल्म में एक्ट करेगा तेरा गांव में तो ऐसा ही तू हीरो दिखेगा हाँ हाँ ठीक है कभी ख्याल आया तो सॉरी सो थ्री सिक्सटी नाइन कैलविन इज ट्रांजिशन टेम्परेचर ही इज माई टी बॉय एक्चुअली सो so this is very important so greater than uh, this thing below uh, 369 this is stable above this is stable this is clear so that's why it's called as so at 369 both are stable as simple as that okay then now we have the third one that is cyclo we have cyclo s6 the cyclo s6 has a chair like concept so this is also puckered ring structure ha huh? puckered ring structure okay then what happens the cyclo has got a chair like configuration this is called as a chair configuration so that's very important it has a chair configuration 1 2 So sulfur here one two three four five six, okay, configuration. Then what can we say? One very point is above above thousand degree thousand Kelvin. Above thousand Kelvin. only s2 exists and it is paramagnetic and it is paramagnetic then we have plastic sulfur 
plastic sulfur is also called as gamma sulfur. What happens? When you bo boiling for uh, boiling sulfur, boiling sulfur is poured. Boiling sulfur is poured in cold water. Boiling sulfur is poured in cold water when plastic sulfur is obtained. When plastics, obviously it is amorphous. Na? All these are crystalline. This will be amorphous. Plastic, I will also write it as amorphous. Because one moment you write amorphous, many of these things do not apply. Na? Like for example, melting point and all that. Amorphous with range. So, when plastic sulfur. Yeah. Ah, yeah. So, what is allotropy? Ha, so, but you have to understand one thing. Suppose in monoclinic, whatever was monoclinic, let me see. Now, I'll, I'll, I know what your confusion is. Suppose if you say this is monoclinic, you please try to understand that each one of this point is occupied by S8. This is occupied by S8. This is occupied by S8. So, that is the difference in arrangement. Are you understanding? So, solid state when you talked about, okay. You are saying, sir, both, both are S8, sulfur octaatomic. Then how is it different? Are you try to understand that we had rhombic sulfur was orthorhombic primitive. Orthorhombic means something like this. I will answer your doubt. So, this had S8 each point. Okay. Then when you had monoclinic sulfur, it was primitive. So, it was monoclinic in nature. Alpha equal to gamma equal to 90. Beta not equal to 90. So, that was like this something. So, uh, monoclinic we can say always is something like this. Na? Mm, yeah. Something like this. So, here each of the lattice points were occupied by S8. Puckered ring structure. So, that is the difference you have to understand. Why is it allotrope? It is not allotrope because one is at, uh, you will start wondering one is S8, the other is S8, why it is allotropy? It is the difference in the arrangement. One is monoclinic, one is rhombohedral. Yeah. I think I, I have un understood your, uh, what do you call, doubt correctly, correct? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> ah, no, no problem, no problem. Both are primitive, but then the crystal lattice is different, na? One is orthorhombic, the other is monoclinic. So, ah, what were we telling? Yes, plastic sulfur boiling point is poured in cold water when it's plastic sulfur is formed. Is this clear? Then you have again milk of sulfur. So, continuation of this is milk of sulfur. So, milk of sulfur is basically colloidal sulfur. What is colloidal sulfur? See, you simply take calcium hydroxide and sulfur. Okay, you will get you will get calcium pentasulfide CaS5, and you will get calcium thiosulfate CaS2O3. These two, when you acidify, so CaS5 and CaS2O3. Calcium pentasulfide and calcium thiosulfate. Uh, what will happen is in acidic condition, they will form calcium chloride, water, and colloidal sulfur. Now you will wonder why you need colloidal sulfur. See a big chunk of what you call uh, pharma industry depends on all these skin ointments that we have now especially the ones which are being sold as a cure for pimples and all that now i don't know used to be on clarisil or something like that i mean the long time i have not been with the uh, thing in touch with this but then what are they containing they contain simply colloidal sulfur that doesn't mean you take sulfur and start rubbing on your skin it is not possible <laughs> colloidal sulfur because when i say something what happens is people take it the other way and they try their own 
what do you call the Jugadu ideas. Don't do that. We are good at Jugadu, but every time it does not work. See, colloidal sulfur, you know, there is a certain, what do you call, size of the particle. That size of the particle is sufficient to penetrate through the skin of the, through the pores of the skin and go inside and kill the bacteria. See, basically what I'll tell you, the logic is something like this. In the every human body, there is a bacteria called as Staphylococcus aureus. It's called as normal flora. So it is present in the skin. When the Staphylococcus aureus becomes what you call virulent, it starts attacking you only. Then you get all those boils and pimples. That could be because of various factors. So that's why they say, what do you say? People who have pimples, wash your face five times in a day. What is the logic behind that? The logic is very simple. You are reducing the bacterial load. Bacteria becomes less. It will grow again. It will grow exponentially. We know bacterial multiplication and all that. But if you go on decreasing it, you know, you, you are decreasing the number of bacteria, number of attacks. So virulency becomes less. Plus, if you put a sulfur cream, what happens? Sulfur is acting as antibacterial, directly colloidal sulfur. Is it clear? See, in those days, you know, when we had, you know, like, uh, I'll tell you, we used to have this. Where are we using all these things? Now, some, there's got a lot of uses. Like, for example, you know, it, people get fungal infection in this uh, corner of the finger over here, you know, the nail and the joint. That's called a trichoderma something. Trichoderma. I, I forgot the this thing. That, that's called trichoderma infection. So nowadays you've got all kinds of uh, different different antibiotics against fungus. But what they used to do in those days? In those days, they used to more a dangerous idea, but it used to work. They should take sulfur, they should take camphor, all antifungal items. They should take mercury, yes, clear. They take copper sulfate, put lemon juice, mix everything, and every day put it. If you are having 10 antifungal uh, substances, it will work. Trichoderma, I, I forgot that. The norm. So that that it, these are this because so sulfur colloidal sulfur is a part of many antibacterial anti antifungal medicine. Is it clear? So that's why this is important. Take down. I mean, athlete food also be, I don't know much. I'm not, I'm not into sports medicine. I know. Could be, we don't know. I mean, you see, sometimes what happens, this fungal thing is a very resistant, uh, what you call uh, infection. So, sometimes, you know, the age old ideas only work. Then, you see, this is called as, in uh, microbiology, called oligodynamic action. Yeah. Means when you have heavy metals, now. Entering into the cell, the cell dies. Like we always say, na, like our ancestors used to drink every day in the morning uh, water from a copper ion. Copper ions are killing any germs. And plus that small amount of copper ion is a coenzyme to certain enzymes, which for non-vegetarians you get from fish. For vegetarians you don't get. Na? So that's the idea. Dual purpose. This is called as oligodynamic action. Heavy metals in very small quantities can kill bacteria and fungus also. It's just like heavy metals, if you take in heavy, great excess, we will lose our kidney and we will die. Metal poisoning. So, in very large amount, it is toxic to us. In small amount, it is toxic to the bacteria. See this Chavan Prash, what they are selling. I mean, I don't know. But actually, the original Chavan Prash, which is made as per the scriptures, Ayurvedic scriptures, if you make. I'm not talking about the commercial ones. I don't know. They are. They add a small amount of gold leaf, colloidal gold they add in that. And that colloidal <coughs> gold acts as a uh, coenzyme to certain enzyme. That is the idea. So our ancestors were aware that something, some happens. They were not able to understand the micro level what is happening. No, that was, science was not developed at that time. But they were aware the application that in Chavan Pass you should 
that's why i think some fellows may sell chavan prash gold chavan prash silver saman chavan yeah. but actually in chavan prash there is small amount of colloidal gold Ah yes. Can you? What transfer? See, transition temperature is what you try to understand. See, plastic sulfur simply what happens? Well, may I tell you? You have puckered ring structure. Okay. Simply all the bonds break. So when it breaks, it becomes like this, na? So there is no regular structure. So it is plastic amorphous. When you suddenly cool, it loses its structure. You heat it, break all the bonds, and then you suddenly cool it. It's not able to form the bond again. You understood? Eventually, your plastic sulfur will become rhombic sulfur. Eventually. Done. Now we come to compounds of sulfur. So I told you, see, see, I have always been telling you in my classes, like now Bombay, Mumbai or Bombay, whatever. I, I, I am the old school of thought, always calling Bombay. So no offense meant Mumbai. Now you see the temperatures have fallen. Is this clear? I told you that what happens, the sulfur dioxide being very dense, doesn't go up, settles down. So sulfur dioxide excess decreases the partial pressure of oxygen in the air. And this is the season of death. I have been always telling you this. November, December, Jan, when it's cold. I mean, somebody died in my building also today, an elderly person. My neighbor, uh, mother is seriously sick uh, in the hospital for breathing difficulty. So this is all people who have, you know, diabetes and blood pressure and who are 60 plus like me, not about young people like you, we have to be very careful. Last time I showed you that air purifier, correct? We are running that air purifier in the office as well as at home. What is the idea? That the sulfur dioxide will be absorbed by the charcoal, uh, activated charcoal layer. So the oxygen level increases. So this is a see, he's seeing. I told you, this is the reason why we are running. So we'll be able to breathe better. A slight oxygen deficiency for people above 60 with diabetes, and it is sure shot there. And I went to the crematorium today. I saw crematorium is full. A lot of people have died. <clears throat> So we are coming to the sulfur dioxide. That is why I told you this. Sulfur dioxide. What is the source of sulfur dioxide? Bombay is automobile fuel, extra this, uh, the, you know, some factories letting out all the uh, gases and all that. Is this clear? I mean, I still think we are much better in Mumbai. If you ever cross Mumbai beyond Wapi, Wapi, Ankleshwar, Bharuch. You will not believe the amount of uh, pollution that is there. If you are, even if you take a sleeping pill and sleep, you will wake up because of the nasty smell. That's how polluted those areas are. The growth of that area, industrial area, has been accomplished, but at a great cost, it's an environmental disaster. Is it clear? So there the IC Marjaiga without in the cold world could be in the normal circumstance, the fellow will conk out because oxygen is like there is lack of oxygen. So, now we come to first, compounds of sulfur. It's, it's um, suffocating smell. It's suffocating and has a smell. That's a problem. So, when we talk of compounds of sulfur. Compounds of sulfur. So, the first one we talk about is SO2, sulfur dioxide. One of the most important question in sulfur dioxide is making is very simple. Simply heat sulfur, burn sulfur in air, it forms sulfur dioxide. It is a it is a byproduct of all roasting products. I just now told you you got 
minerals or ores which are sulfides what do you do you roast it you roast it in a reverberatory furnace you convert into oxide and you get sulfur dust so sulfur dust is a by product of many industry it is clear i mean this was one of the problem that we had in uh, tuticorin you know vedanta has a very huge what do you call uh, copper smelting plant i mean the plant was so big that when it was producing copper we uh, india had become an exporter of copper but you know, what happens in india uh, that uh, local government is paid off by the chinese and they all created there's there of course there was some small leakage of sulfur dioxide that apart that that could have been sorted out you know but for that small thing they went to the supreme court the local uh, government and then uh, supreme court also sometimes most of these fellows are from the arts faculty you know they are not science faculty to understand that you can you know solve these problems by technology supreme court blanket order they closed down the plant the effect on the economy is india has now become a importer of copper 20000 crore was the investment in that plant so i told it's a leak is the sulfur dioxide can be a part of leakage of it's a part of roasting process of many that's big money which is stuck in tamil nadu i'm telling you vedanta ka now some say there is a chinese uh, what do you call um, idea to derail india's progress possible hai. i don't i always believe anything is possible in india it is clear but it's a very huge plant that we have you know which is not functional to so sulfur dioxide now it's not just studying metals we have to know what is happening you know how small things change it is clear like for example to some extent how china dictates the gold prices one of the by products of gold refining is sorry copper refining is gold so if chinese economy is down it what you call consumes less copper that means less gold is produced from the waste of the gold of the copper refining so there's a global gold shortage and you can see gold prices have gone up from 50 to 58 i think it'll touch 60 if the chinese economy booms they consume so much of copper because of the electronic part so all the copper refining plants are working full stream you understood and so there'll be more uh, gold which will be produced as a part of waste so gold prices will come down so this is how metals you know like uh, they are degraded. like for example today we have a russia ukraine war how does it affect each one has bombed the other fellow steel plant post this war so many tanks have to be again made so what is going to happen steel steel requirement will increase steel prices will go up so you have two steel big steel fellows one is tata steel and jindal they will make lot of money profits in that time so today they are sitting and watching you both fight when it is over i am going to profit that is the at import see what we are teaching has got an economic consequence it's not that we are teaching you because we want to teach you want to pass an exam these are much more Uh, smaller uh, aspects in a bigger game so sulfur dioxide i told you somebody leaking sulfur dioxide can have his 20000 crore investment into trouble you know vedanta has had it is practical in india so sulfur dioxide what is a simple method of preparation method of preparation but this is generally not resorted to because sulfur is very costly i told you we are importers of sulfur from iran so methods of methods of preparation so what do we have simply burn sulfur solid in a air and you will get sulfur dioxide very easily said is okay but i told you one thing a laboratory method we have to know because they ask so normally i never say laboratory method is important but here laboratory method is important why because i told you panchabhutas you know sulfur dioxide ozone hydrogen peroxide nitric oxide and nitrous acid these panchabhutas is clear what are they they act as both oxidizing as well as reducing agent so sulfur dioxide is one of them so if you want to to do some oxidation reduction reaction then you need sulfur dioxide in the lab is it clear so you can create in the lab sulfur dioxide how so 
laboratory method is you take copper and react it with concentrated sulfuric acid okay and what do you get you get copper sulfate plus so2 plus h2 the far more easier method is first method far more is sodium sulfide na2so3 plus hcl forms nacl nacl plus h2o plus so2 i'll give you a connection if you remember in aldehyde ketone chapter we had shifts reagent para rosa aniline hydrochloride it's also called as fuchsin dye so this para rosa aniline is decolorized by using sulfur dioxide we don't pass sulfur dioxide gas through that because i told you it is obnoxious smell toxic poisonous and all that so how do we prepare in the lab para rosa aniline hydrochloride we take the color we take fuchsin dye small amount put it in water okay you will get the pink color solution then we add sodium sulfite add hcl okay so that the dye will become slightly less intense in color and then you pop, pass it through activated charcoal so activated charcoal will adsorb the colored particles not the uncolored particles so the clear solution which you get is your shifts reagent so this is used in the making of shifts reagent so what has happened when you add a aldehyde test for aldehyde aldehyde undergoes oxidation this will undergo reduction back to fuchsin dye pink color is restored so this is a practical application so revision of your aldehyde ketone shifts and i told you shifts reagent shifts base is very different remember that shifts reagent was decolorized para rosa aniline hydrochloride how do you decolorize that sulfur dioxide and this is the laboratory method we are using so it has an application in our study it's not that it's not there i told you that industrial method it's a in industrial method it's a by product of in industrial method it is a by product it's a by product of metallurgy like for example if you have iron pyrite okay fes2 simply heat it in oxygen or air you get fe2o3 plus so2 this is clear now okay take down this much then we'll come to the properties very important properties
So now we come to pro properties are very important because some of these properties So first of all, it is a colorless gas, acidic in nature. So when we come to properties, some of them will be silly, but it has its own meaning. Properties. Because it is colorless, we are not able to understand that there is sulfur dioxide, which is there too much in the atmosphere. Is this clear? But that acidic feeling, the throat, you know, get the throat getting irritated during this winter season, you know, all that, that frequent sore throat attack is an indication of pollution. Because your oxygen and nitrogen is not creating that. It's a sulfur dioxide there which is irritating your throat. Because in your throat it is wet, it becomes sulfuric acid. Sulfurous acid is irritating. In small amount, it is clear. But that's why people get frequent throat infection there. Because of the acidic nature. <clears throat> so, properties. What have we here? Yeah. Sulfur dioxide. It is a colorless gas. It is a colorless gas, okay, acidic in nature and having a pungent suffocating smell, pungent suffocating smell. So this was the problem in Vedanta plant, now this was the problem, sulfur dioxide leaked and the nearby villagers were what you call feeling suffocated, they said oh we will die, one day this fellow is going to kill us. All, you know, hypothetical ideas. This could have been sorted out. Is this clear? I mean, if you look at Chembur, uh, RCF, Rashtra Chemicals Fertilizers, if you look, go to Vivekananda College, you will see distinct smell of ammonia every time. No Bombayite is complaining. We are so densely populated. People have lived in Chembur Sindhi camp for ages together and they have died also because of the poisoning. Nobody complained. Some 10 villagers got into some problem. There is such a big hassle. Such a huge amount of investment got into trouble. So, pungent suffocating smell, it is clear, highly soluble in water. Highly soluble in water. There is a very interesting point over here. Okay. Now, this is the interesting point. One, two, three. What is the interesting point? It liquefies at room temperature. It liquefies at room temperature. That's the first thing. And under a pressure of pressure of how much? Two atmosphere. Two atmosphere. And boils at 263 Kelvin. 273 is what? <laughs> you can understand. 273 0 degree centigrade. So you can see. Now here how this question can be connected. If you remember. Um, last time I was telling you critical temperature. See this is a statement in the textbook. But how this question can be framed. We have done Andrews isothermal in uh, what do you call. Um, 11th standard gaseous state. Where we talked about critical temperature. So, critical temperature is that temperature, okay, at which a gas starts becoming a liquid. So, this and the pressure at which it starts what you call uh, liquefying is called as critical pressure. So, for carbon dioxide was I think some 39, uh, 39.1 or something like that, 38.9 or something like that. So, that value you remember critical temperature of carbon dioxide, that is a 30. 30.98, correct? I told you, huh? 30.98. So, I am is correcting me. Forgive me. I am old man. I am not able to remember all these numbers. But I know what the concept is. So, 30.98 was a critical temperature of what do you call uh, carbon dioxide. That is a question from that chapter. But the same thing they can make it over here. So, if you consider room temperature to be normally 25 degrees centigrade, critical temperature of this will be 25 degrees centigrade when gas will become liquid and Critical pressure will be two atmosphere. Just slight increase in pressure, what happens? Sulfur dioxide becomes a liquid. You will wonder why should I bother about it? You have to bother about it because transporting it becomes easy. 
with so you if you say it is 200 atmospheres then you need special steel cylinders to store two atmosphere pressure is normal steel cylinders you can store as liquid sulfur dioxide it is clear gas has a huge volume liquid has a lower volume so lot of gas can be compressed into a liquid and transported why it has to be transported because from the mine you can transport it to the uh, sulfuric acid industry this is mainly used for making sulfuric acid this is clear so from the roasting that's what i said na we could have easily sorted that out maybe added some more uh, machinery compressed that brought the sulfur dioxide into liquid stored it in cylinder and made something useful about it so this is a very important point is this point clear then i told you it acts as both third fourth it acts as both it acts as both reducing and oxidizing agent reducing and oxidizing agent so sulfur dioxide ozone nitrous acid nitric oxide and hydrogen peroxide okay these are substances which can act as both oxidizing as well as reducing agent so what happens is it oxidate it reduces iodine plus so2 plus h2o it reduces iodine to hi and h2so4 so it reduces what reduction means what addition of hydrogen reduces to hi not hf and it looks hf it is hi halogen to what you call halo acid so let us talk about this we have k2cr2o7 oxidizing agent acidified plus sulfur dioxide it oxidizes sulfur dioxide to sulfuric acid so you have k2 so4 plus cr2 so4 plus h2 okay so remember sulfur dioxide is oxidized to sulfuric acid but that sulfuric acid is getting cancelled with all this during have when i taught uh, um, transition metals this equation was discussed so sulfur dioxide is oxidized to to sulfuric acid but what happens you got sulfuric acid in reactant and product it gets cancelled so you don't realize so you can, there are sulfur dioxide <clears throat> is reduced to what in presence of dichromate or potassium dichromate oxidizes sulfur dioxide to oxidizes to sulfuric acid then what happens is sulfur dioxide now we come to the addition reaction sulfur dioxide so2 combines with chlorine and what does it form it forms so2 cl2 this is sulfuryl chloride this is sulfuryl chloride some of the reactions i may not be taking you know why because um, like so2 plus o2 forms sulfur trioxide i am not discussing those here i am only looking at important ones how does it act as an oxidizing agent the first one is important why because h2s plus so2 it forms h2o plus 3s this is another form of colloidal sulfur this is another form of colloidal sulfur is this point clear you have fecl2 that means ferrous ferric this is ferrous chloride when you react with sulfur dioxide in acidic medium it forms ferrous becomes ferric fecl3 plus h2o plus colloidal sulfur is this point clear so you take down this much next time we'll just start with a cursory glance at the uses and important point is structure of sulfur dioxide and then we'll go over to manufacture of sulfuric acid and its property i think in the next lecture we should complete so we'll stop here for the day so then for those who are on the live stream the next lecture is on 
Wednesday at 6 o'clock. Uh, Priya, I am asking you, 6 will be okay or 6.30 will be okay? Yeah, 6.30. We announced for the live streaming people also. It will be at 6.30.